All right, everyone, it's sort of like Rodney King 2.0, except that in, in this particular case, it doesn't look like the police involved initially did anything wrong. This, this is like the tale over and over again. It's like uh, the dude who so-called so killed George Floyd didn't actually kill him. He was basically dead on arrival when the cops showed up because he was already having heart problems. He was going to die of an overdose. Um, Jacob Blake went for a knife, got shot. You know, he wants sympathy and he's considered a martyr now, which is a pile of steaming horse shit. Um, is, is a violent con, basically. And now you have Los Angeles added to the list of cities that have ongoing violence. And the other day, actually, uh, uh, someone that appears to be, I don't know, maybe a young teen or a, or a diminutive female or maybe even a midget or something, decided to attack several sheriff's deputies and shot them up. Um, and then to, to add insult to injury, you have a random attack, uh, attempted murder, and, and I don't know the status of the officers, Last night they were fighting for their lives. Um, to add insult to injury after this unprovoked attack, which which is you know basically uh, communistic in nature. I'm sure that if they find the perp, they'll they'll find that there were BLM ties. Um, then uh, rioters, BLM members, were actually blocking the emergency room uh, in the hospital and yelling shit about hoping that the pigs die and that, that stuff like that. Don't these people openly at this point? Can the average unmedicated individual appreciate the fact that these groups are literally telling you that they hope that you die, literally shouting slogans filled with violence? It's like a few days ago when Antifa was literally marching down the street, I think it's San Francisco, shouting death to America, marching down the street looking very much like, a, like an Anglo-Saxon version of ISIS. Why is it that people still want to believe that these groups are not violent and terroristic in nature? You got unprovoked attacks on officers. You've got various murders, like Sicoria Turner, the the one the one young black person ever shot recently that was never talked about much by the corporate media. Sicoria Turner, the eight year old black girl in Atlanta that was shot by a BLM mob, and they caught the they caught the perp. He's a BLM member, but you don't know anything about that. You're not allowed to talk about it because it's politically incorrect because it wasn't a cop or a, a white right winger doing the shooting. Uh, you've got numerous, thousands of arsons to the, to the point where they're probably responsible for some of what's going on over in the Portland area with all the wildfires there. You've got literal terrorist activity. You've got people throwing bombs at federal courthouses. You've got people randomly shining spotlights on, on average single-family homes out in the burbs and shouting weird slogans about wanting to, like, drag people out of bed at night, terrorizing their children. You've got a very long-suffering U.S. population that has not yet, by and large, responded with violence towards these commie thugs. And yet the only thing we hear from the legacy media is that these are mostly peaceful protests and that anyone that retaliates against them is a right-wing bigot. That's basically the lie that we're being fed. The reality, though, is that if you read the manifests of Antifa or you listen to what the founders of, of BLM have said, these are communists. They believe in political violence. They openly and unabashedly, they see it as a means to an end. They don't have a problem with political violence. They say it openly. But the average American still, if they're watching TV news or reading the newspaper, they don't get told that. They, 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 the CNN is not posting snippets of Antifa literature, so to speak. They're not posting the interview there where several BLM members are, oh yeah, we're trained Marxists. Yeah, absolutely. Now, Marxism is great. Yeah, that's what we fight for. Oh, well, it's not exactly certain what their economic beliefs are, says MSNBC. It's complete propaganda. It's definitely a lie by omission by these corporations. And you know why they're doing it? They're not doing it mainly because they support communism. I mean, the, the billionaires, the corporatists. They're not doing it for that reason. They're doing it because if they were to fairly report on what's actually happening and tell people, hey, by the way, these are these tens of thousands of people across the country that are rioting are, by and large, they're communists. Some of them are anti-white racists. They shout slogans to that effect on a regular basis. It would play into Trump's hand, and it would easily win him more support, because then Americans, told by a corporation, an accredited journalistic firm like CNN, as opposed to being warned by a bunch of YouTubers and people on alt tech, all of a sudden they would find it acceptable to, to respond to that by, by opposing it. Instead, they say, well, I'm not, no, I'm not, I promise, I'm not against BLM because, you know, I don't want to be racist or something. Well, BLM doesn't care about black lives. 
That BLM member that shot Sequoia Turner, that's one less black life, a little girl, uh, and, and nobody talks about it. It's basically just a grift run by Marxists who want political revolution. And of course, as, as it was pointed out, and I, and I spoke about it at the time, it's not kinetic in nature. Uh, it's an attempt at, at, at getting an uh, over-response by the so-called right wing, uh, and then you have potentially a kinetic movement thereafter if you uh, act improperly. Trump knows this, he's shown great restraint. These groups, though, are communists. By and large, these individuals performing violence come in two flavors, communists and looters. The looters don't have a political motivation, and that's the bulk, by the way, of the people doing the rioting. Especially when you looked at, like, the first night in Kenosha, uh, when you looked at Chicago, most of the stuff there, most of that was looters. It wasn't, you know, Antifa and BLM, it was just looting in Chicago. You know, but, you know, Antifa doesn't usually loot. They're the ones that smash the windows. The looters show up afterwards. It's sort of how it seems to work. Uh, Antifa has deep pockets anyway. They don't have to worry about where their attendees are coming from. They're coming from George Soros. They don't need to loot. Um, <laughs> this is being compacted by coronavirus restrictions. And when you have communist rioters showing up at the hospital, literally screaming, we hope you die, to people that were shot unprovoked by, uh, again, it appears a midget, possibly, <laughs> or something like that, when you have this situation, it's incredible how the legacy media doesn't report on that aspect of it. If you're watching CNN, you're not going to see that, that snippet. You can get it from the LA uh, SDHQ Twitter page. Uh, you can get it from YouTube. You can get it on a BitChute channel. You can, get, you can see it tweeted about by, by Andy No or, so, or Tim Pool or something. But you're not getting it from CNN. It's just a pile of lies by omission. That's about all. Peace out.